All right, I'm back on Highway 17, the Trans-Canada, heading west towards Manitoba. I'm back at the old chip truck. I have ordered myself a poutine, which is a Canadian classic dish for those who are not familiar. Uh, this is a pile of french fries topped with cheese and gravy. Just about 20 more minutes to the Manitoba border. My long drive back west towards home would take me from Ontario through central Manitoba and central Saskatchewan before ultimately arriving in Alberta. To start, I would take Trans-Canada Highway to Manitoba Highway 44, then travel north to the Icelandic village of Gimli on the shores of Lake Winnipeg. From Gimli, I would travel directly west to the city of Dauphin, the Ukrainian capital of Canada. The 643-kilometer journey would take me just under seven hours to complete. I'm now on Manitoba Highway 44, which is also a westbound highway that takes a little bit more of a northern route around the city of Winnipeg to some of the northern suburbs, including the shores of Lake Winnipeg. It's an incredibly narrow, bumpy road though, so definitely going to slow me down a little bit. I made it here to Gimli, Manitoba, which is also known as New Iceland. This is the place that has the second greatest number of Icelandic people per capita outside of Iceland. This is the shores here of Lake Winnipeg, so one of Canada's largest lakes, stretching 350 kilometers or about 200 miles north to south. So this is the famed Viking statue of Gimli, Manitoba, which was gifted by one of the Icelandic families that settled in the region. I thought it was going to be a lot bigger, so it is quite diminutive, but it is pretty well done. So I'm just about 70 kilometers or so west of Gimli at this point. One more roadside attraction to add to the list of this road trip across Manitoba. This is known as the King Buck statue. So right now we are entering the Ukrainian part of Manitoba. A lot of Ukrainian Orthodox churches everywhere with their signature onion domes on the top. So you'll see more of these as we pass through this area of the country. So you can see these adorable Ukrainian Orthodox churches are springing up pretty much everywhere. There's two of these churches in Poplarville, so we are not even in the heart of Ukrainian territory in Manitoba yet. All right, crossing over Lake Manitoba Narrows. Very beautiful spot. So this is the narrowest point between the western half of the lake and the eastern half of the lake. And hence, that is why they're able to build the causeway over the lake to connect the east and the west sides. Otherwise, you'd have to go all the way down to Winnipeg to get across. So this allows you to get to Dauphin without much ado. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful churches everywhere. All right, some excellent views of Riding Mountain National Park right there. Riding Mountain is not so much a mountain as it is a ridge. I took a slight detour just to turn into Riding Mountain National Park. I'm gonna go up about two, three minutes drive, but I gotta turn around because it is the wrong direction. Beautiful scenery going down the hill. All right, I decided to stay in Dauphin for the night. Uh, it was just getting too late and the hotel that I had planned on booking in Swan River was sold out. So it was a no-brainer. So I found this room here for $85 a night plus tax at the Dauphin Express Inn. So it's actually not too bad. 